Facebook or YouTube. Okay, so other than I'm a parenting strategist, I'm also a study coach and I'm also an international speaker and also I'm an online course creator. Okay, and as a parent, I feel you as a parent because I was once a professional chartered accountant juggling work and family and I know that Singapore is a lot of things that parents have to worry about and the biggest thing is about studies. So that's why I want to help parents out here who have struggles with their children in their studies. Okay, so for myself, I have two high achiever children and they are all doing well in the integrated program schools. And I have a story that spans about 17 years of experience raising kids. And this is my framework, you know, to how to help parents as well as the children to know how they can achieve the grades that they deserve. And for my story, my son is actually now in Hua Chong Institution, but his story was not the usual story, which you see like when he's young, he loves to study, he's just the opposite, okay? So he struggles with his own behaviour issues in school, as well as he couldn't focus, he does shoddy work, and he does not even like to revise at home. So for me, I have to find a lot of different ways, either using flashcards, mind maps, but sometimes I also have to go to the teachers as well as the principals to actually learn how to help him with his behaviour as well as his issues about his school. Okay, so I have achieved a lot of different methods. Okay, and finally in 2019 when he was hitting his PSLE, he was able to be one of the top PSLE pupils and his results is having three A's down and one A. Okay, so, and I struggled, okay, I struggled as a parent helping him with science, okay, that's why I'm so happy that, you know, I met Mr. Yu this year, and then importantly that he's going to share with a lot of y'all here who are struggling about science, alright, and importantly, we want to be happy parents, okay, and we want to help our children to be more confident and self-directed learners, and importantly, we are we need to optimize the learning, okay, whether they're in school or in tuition. So I advocate children to love learning and self-motivating and forming good study habits. So stay till the end of our live because there will be tickets to my upcoming webinar, 3M System to Ace the Exams. And I have a free trial for Jasmine's master class for the first three parents today that's worth $70. And it's for primary two to primary six. And Mr. Yu is going to have a power class soon and there's limited seats. So for parents in this life, you will have the privilege to have the seats to his power class. Right? So today's topic, for those who just joined us, you know, this is the topic on strategies to achieve AL1 for PSLE science. Right? So importantly, as a strategist, I always look at what is the science format, right? So in PSLE science here, we have two sections. One is booklet A and booklet B. So booklet A, we have multiple choice questions. There are all together 28 of them and each one carries two marks. So it's about 56% of the whole paper. And booklet B is open-ended questions. So if you are a student that do very well for multiple choice but end up doing very badly for open-ended questions, you are not likely going to score the AL1 that you deserve. So it's about 12 to 13 of the questions and every question is about 2 to 5 marks. So the total percentage is 44% of the whole paper. So importantly, the duration of paper is 1 hour 45 minutes. Alright, so this is the format and the duration for the exam. So let's stop over here and hello Mr. Yu. Thank you for joining us today to share with us all the tips that you can give for our students who are having PSLE this year. Okay, Mr. Yi, can you, you. Uh, yeah, can you also share with us, other than that, I know that you are an ex-PSLE science marker. Okay, what other special things that I have not, uh, I have not known, yeah, you can share with us. Okay, uh, first of all, happy National Day to parents who are out there. Mm. So, I'm very thankful today uh, is being invited by uh, Miss Jocelyn Locke to do this uh, live YouTube. Actually, it's my first time doing a live YouTube. So mm. I'm still learning from her the different skills uh, in doing this. So uh, let me uh, do a screen share mm. and uh, I will start my PowerPoint slideshow from the beginning. Mm. Yeah. Okay, firstly, uh, I'm very thankful that uh, I have very good uh, mentors in my life. 
I was actually a teacher in uh, Peihua Presbyterian. Mm. So during my six years there, uh, I had the chance to mark the PSLE Science Paper Section B for three years. Mm. Because actually, you know, the PSLE Science Paper Section B is one of the most difficult PSLE paper to mark. Because there are many answers mm. given by uh, students. And also sometimes uh, we hesitate whether to give this answer right or wrong. So if they consult the more senior uh, marker. Mm. So uh, that has given me a lot of experience in marking PSLE uh, exam paper. And also with this experience, I can help students to zoom in on the right uh, keywords, the right phrases, so that their answers uh, will be accepted and be awarded the full marks. So other than that, uh, I also had the opportunity uh, to teach overseas. Uh, this is my uh, graduation search from uh, NTU. Uh, as you can see here, I actually was a trained PE teacher. <laughs> and I'm very thankful that actually, as you know, now it's the Tokyo Olympics, right? Yes. Uh, I think in Singapore, it's very uh, rare mm. that somebody has been trained by an Olympian. <laughs> so I'm actually one of them. If you remember our former uh, athlete, Mr. C. Kunalan, he was actually one of my uh, coach when I was doing the... Uh, NIE training. Mm. I still keep in touch with him. In, in fact, he's a very inspiring person, very humble. He represented, uh, actually the first time he went for Olympic game was in uh, when he was a Malaysian. Mm. So he represented Malaysia first time in Tokyo Olympics. Then four years later, he represents Singapore in the Mexico Olympic Games. <laughs> yeah. So you're so privileged as well. Uh, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have also an opportunity to teach in the Shanghai International School. Uh, I was there for two years as the head of science and uh, that year is actually quite challenging. As you can see here, I'm one of the youngest HOD there, mm. uh, stood there. And uh, when I was there, the principal actually tasked me to take care of the whole science department because there was previously there was no HOD before because uh, the organization is quite new about nine years. So when I went in at the 10 year, it was the first year they have a science HOD. So I got to start the department from scratch, got to buy the uh, equipments for the science lab and also to uh, build the school aquarium mm -hmm. and also design science program to inspire these uh, international students. Uh. Yeah. So that's my experience. And then when I came back, uh, after I left MOE and left the international school, I started my own tuition. So this photo actually taken in 2013. It's my first time organizing this sort of like two or three days science intensive course to train the students. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I find such training is actually uh, quite good because especially students who are staying quite far away, they can't come every week. Mm -hmm. So like this program today where uh, Miss Jasmine Locke invited me to share, I hope that can give parents some insight about the effectiveness of this intensive training. Mm -hmm. So these were my past students. As you can see, uh, like uh, this this girl here, she's already uh, sec three when she was 2015. Mm -hmm. And then this girl was in JC1. They wrote this testimony for me yeah. when I asked them wow. for uh, some uh, sharing what they mm -hmm. have gained. Yes. And also uh, these two girls, actually they represented Singapore in the SEA oh. Games. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And she was actually one of the youngest Spencer that won, won a bronze medal in mm. the SG50 C Games. Yeah. Mm. So I taught both of these girls. So, um, I mean, for science, is something uh, we need to think ahead. It's not just for passing an exam. Because eventually, these students, uh, they will be leaders for our nation. Just like right. Singapore celebrate today SG50, right? Mm. So, if Singapore wants to continue to progress to be the leading uh, technology, uh, science, right? The current P6 student, uh, if you just count maybe like in 12 years time, uh, they will be the in the frontier of our nation's uh, science and technology development. So there's something that motivated me uh, to give them a solid foundation in primary six. Because beyond P6, even in my own life experience, I think it's quite a, like you go on to the autopilot mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the teacher cannot like always spoon feed you. You got to do your own self-discovery. So P6 is a critical year, yeah. Yes, that's right. So Mr. Yu, thank you so much. And we have so much of internet, international experience, HOD Science World Class International School. And it's, you have so much experience that you can give. And remember, you have this 
very interesting mission, right? You have shared with me before. So you want to share with me the mission? <laughs> yeah. Okay, as you can see, uh, because Singapore, as you mm. know, today we celebrate SG 56, right? Mm. Singapore only independence for 56 years. Uh. But before that, uh, before independence, we are still like a country. Uh. Mm. But if you look at the, his the history of science, uh, so far, I don't think we have produced any Nobel Prize laureate. Mm. You know, those who win Nobel Prize. Mm. So one of my wishes, uh, is to inspire and maybe to train uh, the first future Nobel laureate for Singapore. Wow, wow. Okay, great. So it's so inspiring, you know, to, to know this because, uh, yes, because we are all into this like PSLE mode right now. So we thought, oh, this is just science right now. But actually, it goes beyond, right? So, yes, it goes definitely beyond, yeah. That's great, that's great. Okay, so maybe you could uh, share with us some strategies now for our PSLE student this year. Okay, maybe before that, I will just share with some parents okay. about how this uh, this uh, wish uh, like to develop our scientists uh, mm. can be materialized. Okay. So you can see, actually, I'm sure that we are more aware of drones nowadays, right? Mm, that's right. Yeah, they can perform various functions. Mm. And uh, as we transit uh, into a more innovative economy, we need to build capabilities. So this was being a spoken by our former deputy PM mm. at this uh, Institute of Engineering Singapore uh, about five years ago. So yep. I have developed this uh, 5M uh, okay. in my training methodology mm. uh, to help parents and also my students uh, mm. equip so that they can uh, learn science or appreciate science and once they learn and they appreciate, right, it's mm. very natural performance will show. Mm. Yeah. Understand. Just like you learn Kung Fu, right? Yeah. You learn Kung Fu under the master. Then you go and uh, demonstrate your Kung Fu. You, naturally, it will flow out. Yeah. Mm. You, you can't hide, you see. Okay. So I've developed this uh, 5M that covers men, which is myself, my tutors. We mm. are professional. We are competent in coaching. Mm. The materials are my own material, which I designed. I published a book. Mm. And also machines include the apparatus that we use. I even use drones to teach like energy conversion concepts mm. and also uh, other uh, specimens which I brought in from other countries to show the student, hey, look at this insect, it's quite unique. Uh. Yeah, they can feel it. And some students, they're quite amazed. Hey, Mr. Yu, is that a real bat? Uh? Yeah, because I got this specimen uh, from Vietnam. Okay. It's actually a fruit bat, no? Okay. And usually they haven't seen a real bat before that is preserved. <laughs> mm. So this actually in, interests the uh, young minds. Uh. Yeah. Are you doing an experiment in one of the photos? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm doing this. This is called the... Uh, <laughs> we use the column of air to shoot down uh, this pyramid of styrofoam. Uh. Mm. So there's conversion of energy in place. And That's it's mean, fun. So interesting. <laughs> so it must be so fun to be in your class. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, so media we use, as you know, uh, I think now you're on my YouTube channel. Mm. So I've uploaded some of the questions to discuss some interesting science observation. Yes, they are great, great. And definitely through mission, I have a, a very focus in helping students to accomplish their mission. Yes. Yeah. So for most of them, I think who are in today's lesson, you hope that your child accomplished the mission of getting AL1 or AL2 for the coming PSLE science exam. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is the 5M uh, that I've developed. So maybe I just uh, go through uh, briefly. Yes, maybe I just want to add it's really very relevant because uh, we are not just uh, producing students that can uh, do well in exams, but go beyond uh, what they can contribute using their knowledge as well as, you know, uh, having an interest in science is so important for them to propel forward. Especially in secondary school, you need to learn chemistry, bio, physics. So the starting point is right now PSLE. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I want to bring out this specific example because I also fly drones. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So actually from this drones flying, uh, mm. we can extract out these topics uh, which are relevant to current primary school science syllabus. So, for example, classification, right? You're going to ask the student, go and classify the different parts of the drones. Like some parts, they are made of certain material. And then but this is also including material science. Mm. Yeah, air composition as a study in P4, right? 
okay. they can talk about you know actually the amount of uh, air or air mm. density uh, affect the flight dynamics of a drone mm. yeah and then for respiratory and circulatory system because they works as a system just like in this drone right they also have a, like a cpu to send the signal to the different propellers yeah okay. yeah okay. and then electrical system as well and energy conversion is very straightforward uh, P6 student, you all know, right? The battery store, the chemical potential energy converted to electrical energy and then to the kinetic energy in the blade, to the sound energy in the blade. Yeah, yeah. so a lot of things involved and also forces. Wow. So perhaps this may be one of the PSLE questions this year. So you kill uh, seven birds with one stone, just oh. as a drone. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, very interesting because students, especially boys, like, even girls, uh, mm. they are interested with by drones, you see. Wow. So when you bring in this topic, eh, they won't find boring. Go and Mr. Yu lesson can fly drone. Eh. Through the flying of drone, I learned all this concept. Isn't wow. it fun? Yes, <laughs> yes. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Yu. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing is uh this one I think uh, now this from, uh, yeah, thermal, yeah. thermal scanner. Mm. So I want to bring out this example because uh you know, in our life, sometimes we meet people uh, that inspire us mm. to rethink yeah. about education. So I want to bring out two examples here. Remember in SARS, right, 203, so the use of this thermal scanner was actually uh, designed by somebody whom I know. Uh, and this person actually is quite well balanced in the left and right side usage of his brain. And also today, uh, we have a National Day Parade on a floating platform. And this was also the first time, the first user in 2007. So this, this idea of using this platform uh, is actually the first time in the world to create such a big platform. So I'm very thankful that I know these two person. The one on the left actually uh, designed this th the SAR thermal scanner. And the one on the right is the floating platform. So both of them, they actually, they love art. That's why uh, I told uh, Miss Locke that actually as parents, uh, we cannot always tell my our, our child, hey, if you love science, uh, just study science. If you love art, just study art. But because our brain is designed or wired in a way that we need a good balance between science and arts. So maybe that part, uh, Jesseline, you, you can share about your child. I believe your child yeah, also yeah. quite yeah, well balanced. Correct. Too, right? Yeah, yeah my, my, my girl is actually uh, in A-level, she's doing art. But she is very good in bio and very good in chemistry. So she has been asking me, you know, actually, uh, actually a lot of other people don't approve uh, learning art. But to me, I feel that is something that she really passionate about and she promised that she will do well in, you know. And I think it's after that when she comes out of A-level, let's see what uh, there's availability in the market for what she can do. So I advocate a lot of the passion uh, the children has and uh, encourage them yeah that's important so yeah i will also tell her that you know this about this story about the floating platform because a lot of things science and art has to combine together i mean as you look around us right yeah. yes thank you, thank you jesseline mm. okay i think as parents uh, we are need we need to be very aware of this uh, mass law hierarchy of needs to understand and motivate our children well uh, because for me, I've taught many students. This is my like 20 years of coaching. Uh, a lot of students, they lack this level, uh, the psychological, because they are worried about some family, maybe some issues. Uh. So this ground level, uh, the baseline level, need to be set up. Because as tutors, as teachers outside, uh, this is the part where we are very hard to manage. So as parents, you need to be supportive. Uh, you need to give your child a very safe and harmonious environment so that the child can pursue upward. Because without this solid foundation, the building cannot be built higher because it's always shaky at the bottom. So this one, as parents, as educators, we need to be mindful of this. Uh. Yeah. Yes, super, super agree. <laughs> okay, so now I come back. I like to let parents know hmm. because I think uh, especially for some parents who may be having their first child yes. taking this national exam hmm. so today actually through this uh, listening I hope you can continue to stay on because for the next 10 to 15 minutes 
you'll be able to understand what the examiner actually look for in the PSLE Science Section B paper. Okay, can I so, can I share that? You no, know, uh, what yes. I saw disaster in my in my son's answers. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, number one is, uh, he will not be able to. He could not write answers that are scientific enough. So that's why he lost marks. Okay, and he cannot uh write answers that answer to the questions. That's what the two flaws that I found. A lot of students have. So uh, that's why I think your two points are very 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 relevant. Right. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. So number one, the student must be able to give precise scientific answers. Mm. Number two, they must demonstrate the application of concepts. Because in PSLE nowadays, concept application is a focus. The examiner do not want the student to regurgitate the facts, is it? So they must use the facts to the correct concept in that situation. So, so this uh, is I also tell my students, right, because I'm a study coach, right, so yes. I also tell my students, if you answer science, it's not comprehension. So that's uh, science, the scientific techniques must come out of it. So I really want to also share this special technique for the parents here. Yeah. Yeah. So I later you will see some examples that beside the scientific fact, if they use it in the wrong situation, uh, they won't get that marks. So here the student must be able to apply the scientific facts concepts and principles to the right situations and sometimes these situations are quite new so maybe they see it the first time mm. but actually exposure to different type of questions like for myself i like to design questions so if your child joined my coaching right yeah. the child actually will be exposed to different questions uh. the teacher mm. never said before one mm. later you can see one very good example yeah so i think one one of the things that, that i also want to say is that uh when when students see things that they think is un unknown right they panic they leave blank <laughs> then yes. they get zero marks yeah. yeah so through more exposure they actually be more confident uh, to uh, look through the questions and answer confidently mm -hmm. so this is a scheme work of the MOE and SCAB about primary science education so you can uh, go to the website due to the time constraint I won't go in details okay most important is all these skills they are tested for PSLE Mm. Observation, comparing, classifying, using apparatus equipment, communicating means you see the graph or chart then to explain uh, what is happening. Mm. Inferring means use use the data to predict what will happen. Uh, generating possibility, all this. Okay, yeah, as, as you can see, as you go down, this uh, become more difficult. Wow. Okay, the top one is easier. As you go down the list, is more difficult. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so these are the all the topics are uh, tested in uh, PSLE science. Mm. Uh, I have separated them according to their levels. On the left is the lower primary P3, P4. On the right is P5, P6. But due to COVID-19 since last year, as you can see, these topics will not be tested. Mm. Living together, all this will not be tested. They have been removed from last year as well as this year PSLE. But I urge parents, uh, mm. ask your child to also learn. Yeah. Mm. Yes, because yes. Uh, this will not be retaught in secondary because some of these topics they need the prerequisite uh, for them to do well in secondary one yeah. mm. yes. so these are important yeah. and uh, because these topics are being removed in a test content mm. that means more weightage will be set to other elements uh, uh. Mm, yeah. that's right okay so let's continue so this is something new. Your child who was taking PSLE this year will be experiencing this uh, AL. Mm. We call the, uh, the, the new scoring benchmark. Levels. Yeah, which is very similar to the old level. Mm. Yeah. So you can see if you want to score AL1, which is equivalent to the A star nice. in the past, you've got to score 90 or above. Yeah. And there's a very short bandwidth uh, for AL2. 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, only 5 mark bandwidth, similarly for this. So my objective for child for your child coming for my 2 day intensive science in September, uh, hopefully your child is in this level at AL3, I have to upgrade his or her marks to AL2 or AL1. Yeah. And also this can be found in, uh, in the internet mm -hmm. under MOE website. Uh, Okay, the reason of showing you this, uh, mm -hmm. because I know that some parents, you may want to uh, ask your child to aim to 
qualify for express. But the child is not, may not be wired for express stream. Okay, I'll give you one good example. In the past, I've got this child. Mm. Uh, he already tried his best, but he only scored 185 for mm. his uh, PSLE. So mm. he's streamed into normal academic. Yeah, because that child actually needs some support because that year when I coached him, uh, his, his, uh, his dad passed on. Uh. Mm. So I go the extra mile. I ask him to come to my house to study because he stay nearby. Uh. Mm. So I give him some extra help. Mm. And I know this child really tried his best. Mm. And I also try to appeal to him to study in the school just below his block. Uh. Mm. So thankfully, the school accepted because I think he almost matched the cutoff point. Mm. But because of this family issue, the, the school principal allowed him there. And that was very grateful that the school accept him because uh, when he in NA, right, he topped the class. You know? And I was quite surprised a few years ago, uh, this student actually texted me, he said, Mr. Yu, I given a, to go to the Singapore Poly uh, wow. to do what, you know, to do aeronautical science. You know? Wow, interesting. Yeah, aeronautical science is the top, uh, Top, I mean, cause uh, in mm-hmm. Singapore Poly. Not and many people reason, can apply. Yeah, not right? many people can make it. Because for NA student, if they do well in the, at SEC 4, mm-hmm. at SEC 5, actually, they study in the Polytechnic. They call year zero. Yeah. So if your child uh, maybe is a late developer, don't always force your child to go to Express. Because they are late developer, they may need more time uh, uh, to activate their brain cells. Or maybe they are mature, super, mature. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they mature later. Yeah. Mm. So that's why I want to bring up this to encourage parents because every child is different. Yeah. Mm. Some right. of them they excel academically. Some actually they are uh, between they like hands on plus academic, and some are more hands on. Sure. Yeah. Okay. For the PSLE science, so this one is actually you can do a screenshot or you can revisit uh, this recorded section. Yeah, I won't spend too much time going through this. Mm. These are the definitions which the examiner wants the student uh, to do. Because as I go through the example in this one, you will be able to understand what describe mean. So this is a very typical example for P5 and P6 student about a water cycle. The student is supposed to describe how water was obtained from the cup, from mm. this seawater. Okay, so you can see this one, answer one, answer two are not accepted. Answer 3 is accepted, but it's relatively long. So you can uh, understand. Describe means they are supposed to give relevant details. They are not required to explain, unless they change to explain. So describe is like you just write down what you see, observation. Just like uh, you see a uh, like narrative composition, okay? Narrative composition, narrative, okay. to give explanation. The context is very important, right? At least yes, you know correct. where what what to call it, the cup, the stone, the plastic sheet. Yeah. yeah. So for this one, they need to use keywords uh, uh, mm. here. These are the key water evaporate and then water vapor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there this process involved. The seawater gain heat and then becomes or uh, uh, evaporated to form the water vapor. The water vapor lost heat to the cooler inner surface and condense to form tiny water droplets. Mm. So these are quite standard. Because once you understand the concept, uh, yeah. you can use this concept in different scenarios, just like we wear spectacle, right? right? So sometimes when we leave the air-conditioned car, we go out, right? At the condensation form. So you yes, can use right. the same thing to explain. The warmer water vapor mm. lost heat to the cooler surface of a glass and condense to form tiny water droplets. So it's the same thing. Yeah. Yes. The same once story you- for most of the questions. It's called the same concept in different scenarios. Mm, yes. That's like, even like I, draw, I drink my cup of tea, right? Sometimes you drink, it's mm, hot, right? This thing mm, fog up. Yes. So you can see the hot water vapor from the tea loses heat to the cooler surface of the glass. Yeah. So it's a mm. concept, but they use in different scenarios. Yeah. But importantly, the, the concept and the name of the process has to be shown because a lot of students, they don't write the, the process. Yeah. So you get zero as well. Yes. Okay, here is a very good example. Use the right uh, scientific fact. Mm. The scientific fact is correct, okay. but in the wrong situation. Okay, mm. Can you see this student being marked wrong? So air can be right. compressed. Uh, yeah, actually air can be compressed is a scientific fact. You know, mm. It's a scientific fact, it's true. Mm. But in this example, it's not air can be compressed, explain the observation. Mm. 
cannot expand. So you can see here that they pump in only 50, right? But you have a remaining space of 100. We okay. got 300 minus capacity, or but you minus 200, you have 100 cm cube. Yeah. So 50 ml go inside, uh, they don't need to compress, you've got more than enough space to spread out. So the proper answer should be, air is a gas, it does not have a definite volume. It occupies the remaining space of the container. Mm. So here is a wrong application of a scientific fact. Mm, yes. yeah. So the, the child cannot memorize the answer. Yes, the yes, child needs to know the concept, see the situation, and then apply it to the right situation. That's the second level of uh, learning, really. Not just yes. regurgitating, right? Mm. Yes. So the, the child will read the questions carefully. Because the, this same question, uh, mm. I show you, uh, how you get the second answer correct if you write air can be compressed by changing the number of plunges. Okay, later, I'll show why this, this question can use to test student logical reasoning. Okay, so you can see here, uh, explain means, but here they say explain, right? So you have to give reason. Yes. Just now the previous one is described, no reason needed. Mm. Explain will be needing more, more things already, right? The yeah, they must give the reason behind this. Mm. Okay, now I change the question slightly. Uh. Mm. Same apparatus. Uh. Mm. So instead of pump one time, now mm. pump four times. Okay. So mathematically, 50 times four is 200, right? Yes. Correct. Yes. So parents, 50 times 4 is 200, but you only have 100 cm cube of space. Ah, now you see, ah, mm. now air can be compressed, is correct. Yeah. Because now you need to force in 200 cm cube of air into 100 cm cube of space. Mm. Yeah. This is the right concept to use. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Babi Sui, can I ask you a question? Like, okay, yeah. is this something difficult for the child to develop? You know, like, I think a lot of parents say, oh, I, my son cannot apply, you know, he got all the concepts, he makes, he knows everything, but it's something that, is it able to uh, quickly develop, you know? Okay, as long as the child understands the concept, uh, sometimes I use real life example, uh, like, you know, most child, they can cycle, right? They can yeah. ride bicycle, right? Yes. So I told them about the bicycle wheel. Uh. So if you, if you pump more pump in the bicycle wheel, the, you can feel the tire is actually harder, uh. Right. It's actually a forcing more air into the same space. You know? The air becomes compressed. Yeah. So here you can see, yeah, I slide, I change the question slightly. I say state your reason. Uh. Just on the previous one is explain, right? Explain. Explain yes. you need to give reason. So mm. state only. Uh. State you just say why why uh, is 100. Because uh, 200 squeeze inside 100, air can be compressed. So there's a reason. That's why I change slightly. Like, state your reason. Mm. Got it. Okay. So it's a skill that can be uh can be uh, developed. Be, yeah, can be developed over a short period of time. Yeah. Okay. okay, this one also I use real life example. Ask them open the freezer at home. Oh, okay. okay, they like to feel the wind coming out. Experience right it and uh, experience your time. Yeah, then they can they can understand better. This part of the long term memory, how they can remember. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they can they can actually uh, visualize it every time they open the freezer to take ice cream right from there. <laughs> mm, yes. Yeah. So this is also a key concept. Okay, parents who are out there, I like to share with you one important thing. Uh, because in the past, PSLE marking, mm. they allow students to use the word air. But over the last two years become more strict. Because you see, if you use air, because air they learn in primary four, right, is a composition of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and other gases they don't condense it. It's actually the water vapor with a higher temperature in the surrounding lost heat to the air with a lower temperature in the freezer. So you take note of this. Huh? Yeah. Now, if they write air, this one, they will minus half mark because air cannot condense. Okay, It's a water vapor. Okay, Water vapor lost heat to the temperature of the lower surrounding air mm -hmm. and condense to form tiny water droplets. Okay. So these are the key scientific words. Mm. And then here they need to interpret this one. This is called communication skill. So this is your strategy too? <laughs> communication skills. Yeah. Communication means how they interpret graphs or tables and then write down the observation here. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So for example here, this, this, this student get it correct or one mark. Let's say if another student gives the answer, the temperature of the surrounding air they use he used affects uh, the amount of starch present in the plant. 
Yeah, because a fact didn't say, is it? Increase or decrease. So no relationship given. So this one is zero mark. Because not no specific, specific enough. Yeah, not specific enough. Yeah. So you've got to remind your, remind your child to be more specific. They yes. must give the relationship. Is it a decrease or increase relationship? And then he also, uh, this one is a wrong concept. Escape. Because uh, we cannot lose the corners. You can see here, the student wrote, the corners will not escape that, e that easily. So it's not corners escape. Uh, it's actually what? Mm. Hit gain or hit loss. The right concept. So this is like a child uh, mixing up the concepts or not applying well, right? This, this one generally, there are two types of students. Uh. Mm. One, they totally the concept wrong. Okay, that's mean they thought it's always like, as you say, as you can see at the corners escape. Yeah. Okay, because we don't teach corners escape, we oh. teach the object either gain heat or lose heat. Because right. heat flows from region of higher temperature to lower temperature. This is what they learn, heat gain or heat loss. Can I also say that the child didn't actually also read what they write? I mean, uh, I, I think some of them have this problem. <laughs> they write already, they never take a second look at it and then they think it's correct. So this is one of the things I feel students should yeah. also be, be aware of. Yeah. See so what they you're must, writing. They must be very careful. Okay, the other thing I like to use is, uh, as parents, you can also use some of the section A questions uh, to develop section B answering technique. So for example, I see in this is, as you can see, uh, is an open-ended, uh, this is a multiple choice. Multiple choice, yes. Yeah, but I can ask this one in section B, uh, mm -hmm. explain the observation, why. Mm -hmm. uh, why. Okay. It can be developed into section B, explain your answer for part A. Mm -hmm. So as parents, as educators, we can ask them to give, uh, so they must give the res this reason. Uh. Mm -hmm. The carbon dioxide in A, in test tube A, right? It's able to react with the lime water more quickly because you can see this part, right? It's in contact uh, with the lime water. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then uh, this one is also a very good P4 questions. Okay. Uh, parents out there, if your child in P3 and P4, uh, P4 is a very critical year because P4, they actually do internal streaming, but some school they don't tell the parents. Mm. Okay, internal screening means they will screen the students with better marks, right, to the better P5 class. So P5 to P6, they will promote on block. So this is what helps out the parents because for science, right, out of the other three other subjects, science is the easiest to improve within a short period of time. Mm. Yeah. So there are some parents who ask me to coach their child in P4 after the SA1 because they want to... Uh, have a higher chance to be promoted to better P5 classes. Yeah. So this is a P4 topic, which is a very uh, good uh, higher order thinking skill. We call HOT skill, uh, higher order thinking. And this one actually appears very commonly in most school P4 exam paper, because we know that uh, air has mass and occupies space. Okay, and air can be compressed. So, the highly compressed air, though having the same volume, because you notice here, right, the container P and Q, if you empty the water and pump air inside, right, they will have the same volume of air. But if you, as you, as you can see here, if I pump more pump of air in, let's say either container, right, the container will be heavier because the air is more compressed. So this is one good question to test your understanding. So, so the more compressed the air in P, right, mm -hmm. for example here, yeah, yeah, because they say he pumped 300 cm cube of N to P and 100 cm cube into Q. So mm -hmm. here being more compressed, it will be having a greater mass. So this this P will sag down. It's, uh, like you say, it's a tough question. Huh? <laughs> Actually, this question is not tough. Uh. It's the student may be careless in answering. Mm -hmm. But if they understand this concept about air can be compressed, air is a matter then they can explain this part. Let's and choose uh, the right concept to apply. Yeah, mm. correct. Yes. So the other thing is connecting textbook to knowledge. Okay, this is uh, me about a few years ago. As you remember, Singapore suffered this haze, right? So I use some of this satellite image uh, to teach my students about air pollution. So as parents, you can also do that. Mm. Comparing the air pollution of these three uh, countries 
and then designing questions here. This happened actually is the actual real time uh, because use a real life example is better. Uh. Yeah. So the child are uh, learning textbook knowledge, right? Can relate to what is happening in real life. Right. So these are actual actual charts that I extracted from the NEA website in the year uh, 2011. You remember that time Singapore had this haze, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, correct. So I think it's, uh, I mean, something for the parents is that we, we see signs everywhere, right? And yes. other than we we talk to them about schoolwork, you know, do homework, you know, we also can talk to them about uh, what's happening around us and we re- relate it to math, science, English or Chinese. That's what I have been advocating as well because uh, we spend so much time with our children, you know, compared to tutors, but compared to teachers. So we are the best uh, educators for them. So yes. what you say is so true. Yeah. Yeah. And then this one more, more uh, real life to us. Uh, you know this one, right? Mm. The RT, right? <laughs> yes, 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 correct. The so I designed this question to test students. Test uh. Yeah. Like they do the observation here. Look at this this chart here. State the test results. So it's a negative test result. Mm. Okay. And then also I say that what happens if some people uh, uh their first test, right? Positive. First tests were negative. Oh, negative. Okay, first tests were positive, positive and then yeah. subsequently confirm negative. Mm. So what That's are the, the two reasons? reasons. Yeah, what are the reason? So that would be they can give uh, maybe the test key not accurate, maybe the person performing did not follow the correct procedure. Sure, yeah. yeah. These are the illicit possi- possible reasoning mm. scheme from them. I see. Yeah, so using real life example. Wow. So I, I think uh, Mr. Yu's lessons are really very interesting, you know, <laughs> and really encourage parents, you know, to, to look at the kids courses as well. Yeah. yeah. I also like to use news article to help mm-hmm. them like this one putting out forest fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, connecting current affairs uh with them like, using science and English or mother tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the past I also I published this book about character education. Uh so as I say, like there are people who inspire me. So Mr. Kunalan here, mm-hmm. uh, he actually helped me wrote this part on the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm quite thankful for people who have helped me uh, to be successful and I'm also looking forward to help your child to be successful in his or her life pursuit. Yes. Right. So this wow. one really for this from this parent. Mm. Yeah, because this child actually returned from overseas. So mm. she has a learning gap. Yep. And the mom was very happy that after my one day training, the child jump score from 55 to 83. Ah, so awesome. Super super. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah. yeah. So I was very happy also. So I rewarded a child with a drone. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. great. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this one is uh, almost coming to my last slide. Oh, yes. Actually, yeah, quite uniquely, I was sharing with uh, mm. all these 11 students came from the same school. Uh. They came from my one day training to help them in the section B answering skill. They came after SA1. So actually, all of them improved. And the girl that improved the most is this one. She improved by 51.8%. Wow, okay. So yeah, most of them actually improved more than, uh, you can see here, like, from here onwards. Mm. Uh, this one, right? 24%, 39%. Mm. Yeah. More okay. than half the class improved by more than 20%. Wow. So it's, wow. Please tell us when is your next course <laughs> <laughs> so we can get our children to sign up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then just how earlier I told parents I'm quite passionate. So for those students who can't join my course, right, you can actually purchase this. And today is SG50. I'm giving also this. Have. <laughs> <laughs> I also have. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I autograph yeah. for you, right? <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, you did, you did. So yeah, what are the resources that I, I, I want to ask? So since you know, we have uh children that are really want to get better scores, you know, AL3 or they want to get AL2 or AL1, right? So yes. uh, what are the different ways that, you know, you can, for different uh, time constraints, you know, or budgets, you know, you can tell us how you can help them. Yeah. So firstly, I promise a parent, uh, if your mm. child mm. spend 12 hours in my book, right? But this child hours is don't compress in one day. Uh. You can spread out the child hours in six days, uh. one day, two hours they can master the technique in section B answering. So I got full solution inside this book. And then uh, I have at least uh, about 20 QR code inside. So when the parents or the child, they scan the QR code, it will lead the child uh, to my YouTube channel where I explain the question. 
So that's something quite unique. Uh. They can learn. Uh, for those who have budget constraint, you can consider this. Uh. This is very cheap. Self study, uh, right? Yeah. Self study, yeah. Uh. I, I study, uh, I study. <laughs> Yeah, self study, correct. <laughs> okay. I'll study coach, uh, I have to teach people how to start self study. Okay, yeah. great. So those who want to see today's uh, national day, right? You mm. later I forward the number in the, my next next slide. You can copy down. You can text me. Must buy, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is twelve dollars for today only. After that, it will be fourteen dollars. So I give you two dollar discount, uh, because I absorbing the the mailing cost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. It's it's really. Okay, I so think... parents, uh, I advise you. You can jot down my number here. You can WhatsApp me. Yeah. Uh, after the interview hmm. so my number is 8268-5299 yes so the course that I highly recommend for this year PSLE student hmm. because actually in the past I don't conduct this course but because parents they have the high demand hey Mr. Yu can you right. do something uh, during the September one week break hmm. to give our child a booster hmm. okay, so I say okay uh, never mind I try my best so I have reserved two dates on the 7th which is a Tuesday and a 10th the Friday okay the reason I spread this out got two main reasons mm. I need them to have time to Digest. absorb the thing on day one yeah. and then my second reason because other days I'm quite busy in my own coaching mm, can, can. So actually Tuesday is my off day uh. Friday I have lesser coaching so I I spread out over uh, these two days on mm. 7 and 10 and this is the timing so don't worry uh. this one is actually is a full zoom lesson yeah which I will show uh, you more detail. My objective is to help you achieve this. Right. Let's say your child currently is at AL3, mm. has a high chance to upgrade to AL2 and AL1. Yes. Yeah. So this is the full training details. So mm. day one, I will review all the concepts, mm. the key concepts yeah. needed for PSLE, All right. which is inside the book. Mm. So those who are of you who are joining this course, uh, you receive the book as part of the fees. No? That's why I need parents to register early yes. so that I can mail over the book. Okay, I That's need right. about five working days because due to the mm. same post mailing service, five yeah. working days is safer. Yeah, and also you have limited seats, you know. That's why, you know, uh, please go and sign up fast. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, let me also uh, uh, clarify. Uh, mm. This course is, is a kind of a like mass lecture. That's why I open up to maximum 130 pupils. So far about... Uh, quite a number of them have already signed up so this is like they do not have much chance to ask questions so you need to understand okay. I'm actually day one I'm going through the concept okay, some parents they like this do you know why? Um, summarize for them for the kids oh because uh, I help them babysit <laughs> <laughs> oh because yeah if I, don't teach, the book, right? if I don't teach right, the child may because it's holiday ma, they may be busy gaming ma, they may be busy uh, right. Yeah, things. and not doing studying. Still, never mind. You you help me help my child revise. Mm, yeah, it's true. It's true. Okay, because in the past I do this course uh, at a higher cost at a smaller group, mm. but because of the high demand, I want to help more parents. I lower the cost by one hundred dollars. Mm. I make it into the mass lecture mm. so that more people can benefit. Yep. Yes, and then yes. uh, this one, uh, quite likely, uh, the 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 child who register right those who child register they will also receive I have rec I will record a small segment of this uh, to be send them to a private link they can review the question I have uh, uh, discussed mm. before the final exam because this year PSLE science paper is on the 5th October my training actually ends on the 10th so from the 10th September to 5th October you still got 3 more weeks to revise mm. correct yes so you uh, seize this opportunity. Mm, great, great. Yeah. So, so that's all this, for my sharing. Alright. So yeah, go and sign up for his course. It's limited, you know, really uh many people are really signing up. Yeah. So uh, can I share uh, my live, you know, my webinar? Yeah. So yes. Okay, so just now we talk about here. Yep, so my webinar is about 3M system to ACE exams. And this is a webinar for, you know, for optimizing your tuition as well as school learning. Okay, and importantly, take down this link, okay, a snapshot, and you can go to the link to sign for it. Okay, sign up for it. And the next webinar is on the 21st of August, Saturday, 8.30, right? And today, because uh, importantly, right, I feel that it's important to keep 
the students in check. That means if they are keeping them motivated with the right mindset, it's so important. And I uh, actually have a master class, you know, and for P3 to P6, okay, I actually have a class every Tuesday for P6 week. So if your students are, you know, your children is P6, right, we want them to keep them properly motivated. Okay, so I've set up a class, a class for them every Tuesday. But for this session, you know, I'm going to open up for three students, okay, in P3 to P6, you know, and uh, to actually cultivate the right mindset, motivation and methods, okay? The first trial is free, so that's why I want to uh, let everybody to go in and then the first three will be getting this slot, okay? So go to this link and sign up for the masterclass, right? And you're on the way to getting the ace, right? That's all. Thank you so much, Mr. Yi. Thank you. Yeah. So are we going to have another session to share more tips from you? Which is uh, yeah, you can you can uh, organize. Yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. there's one more session, right? Yeah, so we have it on the fifteenth of August. Yeah, so we'll have a, uh, and then you also can invite more of your friends. Yeah, so to join us. Okay, thank you, Mister Yu. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. Mm. So use.